We've finished module one, where you learned about the context and background for deep learning. You're now ready to start learning about how neural networks work and go under the hood of deep learning. We're going to start by looking at a single neuron model, also known as the perceptron. It's important to understand how the single neuron model works because large networks of many neurons essentially are just a bunch of these single neurons working together. If you take the largest, deepest neural network and you drill down to the computations of a single neuron within that network, it's going to essentially behave just like the single neuron model that we're going to talk about in this lecture. What the single neuron model does is to sit around waiting for input, which is always a set of numbers. How many numbers depends on the dimensions needed to represent a single example of data. For example, an 8x8 grayscale image would be represented by 64 dimensional input, where each value corresponds to the intensity of one of its 64 pixels. For a different image from the same training set, the input would be a different set of 64 values. General n-dimensional input is shown here with variables x1 to xn. Each neuron is specialized to receive input of a fixed size. So this means that a neuron designated to receive 64-dimensional input will not handle 63-dimensional input. The neuron does not take its inputs at face value. Instead, its job is to find individual weights for each input. The weights are represented here as W. So if a neuron is expecting 64 inputs, such as 64 pixel intensities from an 8x8 image, the neuron will have to have 64 weight values. Once these weights have been optimized for prediction through training, which is a process we'll talk about later, they are fixed. And so this means that this set of weights is what this neuron will use to process all input examples. The neuron is now ready to perform its first computational step, which is to compute the weighted sum of its inputs. So it takes all values for all dimensions of its inputs and weights each dimension with the corresponding value of the weight w, and then sums them up together. As a finishing touch, the neuron will add one more term to the sum, which is a bias. Just as the way it was with the weight values, once this bias value has been optimized through learning, it becomes fixed for this neuron. So there will be as many weights as there are dimensions in the input, but only one bias per neuron. The neuron then has to go through one final computational step, which is to pass this sum of weighted inputs and bias through an activation function. In the original perceptron model, the activation function was a step function. So this means that if the sum was greater than or equal to 0, the neuron will output the value 1. However, if the sum is less than 0, the neuron will output a value 0. The activation function basically squashes the sum before outputting it from the neuron. When we move on to networks of many neurons, this activation function is what allows for nonlinear representations. While the original perceptron used a step activation function, single neurons in modern neural networks use a variety of activation functions. A common one that's used is called RELU, which stands for Rectified Linear Unit. For the RELU activation function, like the step function, if the sum is less than 0, the neuron would output a 0. But now, if the sum is greater than zero, the neuron will leave the sum alone and output the sum itself. Another common activation function is the sigmoid, which acts like a smoother version of the step function. This is the end of our introduction to the single neuron model and its computations. In the next lecture, we're going to go over an example of a problem that the single neuron model can help you solve. We're going to show how it can help you predict whether your friend is bluffing at poker. <laughs>